Hey everyone, I'm Christopher Sundrum of Cruises.ca, the sister brand of Mary Travel. Together we offer ocean, river, and expedition cruises, and much more. We design travel experience that will change the way you see the world. Today we are excited to share three different styles of cruise vacations with you. These are sure to create memories that will last in a long lifetime. I would like to introduce you to Katie Cunha of Norwegian Cruise Line, who is super excited to share details of the launch of their brand new ship and why it's so excited. Over to you, Katie. Thanks, Christabel. I appreciate the introduction. Let me just get my screen up here so you guys can all see a little bit about Norwegian. So for those of you guys who aren't familiar with Norwegian Cruise Line, we are a large ship cruise line. We've had ships kind of sailing for just over 50 years now, which is really, really exciting. And we actually visit all seven continents in the world and a huge variety of different destinations. Um, at Norwegian, we are all about free sail cruising. So you have the ability to cruise your way on your schedule, eat where you want, see what you want, do what you want at any point of time. It's a really exciting time at Norwegian. We've been sailing again since last July. We've sailed over just a, over about a half million people now quite successfully and quite sex, uh, safely beyond the pandemic. And we actually have two new ships debuting. One of them is named the Norwegian Viva and that will be sailing in summer 2023. And we have the Norwegian Prima coming as well. I'm gonna to talk to you guys quickly about what it's like to cruise right now with MTL, what you can expect to see on these ships. And then we'll take questions at the very end of the presentation once my amazing co-hosts are done talking as well. So the Prima and the Viva are both going to hold about 3,000 people, and we're going to have a whole bunch of firsts for NCL on board the ship. One of those things is we are expanding our existing pool area with a new area on deck eight called Infinity Beach. And this is going to have some beautiful infinity pools on either side of the ship in addition to the main uh, pool area. We're going to have day beds and we're basically just going to give everybody more space. That's actually a really big concept for us surrounding these ships. We're also going to add some new cool features like the ocean walk on Ocean Boulevard. Imagine taking kids over this and then being able to see the ocean below. So just a really new unique place to uh, get from one end of the ship to the other. For those of the those of you who are scared of heights, we do have elevators, don't worry. Uh, and then at the after the ship, we're also going to have the new Indulge Food Hall. And just from these photos, you guys can kind of see that this ship is bright, it's contemporary, it's here to help you guys uh, experience the ship and the destinations to the most that you can, and just really have that ambience around you at all times. The food hall is going to be comprised of nine different restaurants, and it's going to have casual, premium, and fine dining options. We'll have, for those of you who have sailed with MCL before, we'll have the local bar and grill, known as Oshins on um, some ships in this area, as well as nine different smaller kind of uh, food stalls that will have anything from Thai noodles to cocos for a sweet tooth to gelato, uh, Starbucks, and more. In terms of premium dining, we'll have our Mexican restaurant Los Lobos in this area, and we will also have Onda by Scarpetta. Don't worry, all the other dining options you've come to get used to on NCL will still be around. Uh, they will just be spread out throughout the remainder of the ship. I just wanted to highlight that new area. Now we are going to have a whole bunch of new experiences on board Norwegian Viva and Prima as well. Keep in mind that while all these ships say Viva, the two ships are actually identical. So you will be able to see both ships, uh, they will be completely the same. So the Prima or the Viva. We're taking our existing speedway concept from a two level racetrack to a three level racetrack. And this really is fun for the entire family. I cannot stress this enough. And it's also very environmentally friendly. It is fully electric. For those who don't want to race, but do want to watch, we have our speedway bar, which is adjacent and beneath the racetrack. Uh, and for those of you who are a bit of adrenaline junkies and want a real fast way to get from deck 18 down to deck eight, we have the rush and drop slides. Now these aren't water slides, these are dry slides. So you will actually stand at the top in your clothing and this is literally a fast way to the bottom. It is a free fall, which is really cool. And you what? can duel so you can race yeah. somebody beside you, which is super neat. Like um, for those of you who are interested in playing darts at sea, it's now possible. We've got classic pub darts with a twist. They are virtual, so ensure maximum safety as well. And we can actually have cameras to track and guess score, so no cheating. 
And then we'll have our Galaxy Pavilion, which is expanded to have more virtual gaming, including virtual golf. For those of you who have ever cruised with boyfriends or husbands, we will still have our Formula One simulator car in this area as well. And our Aqua Park and Main Pool are going to be getting a bit of a facelift. We're still going to have our water slides. We're going to have our kids' dedicated splash pool in addition to our main pool. We'll have multiple hot tubs, our pool bar, and a giant large LED screen, which isn't pictured here, but is a great place to watch movies outside at night. Um, our Vibe Beach Club will be an adult-only space that will be on board the ship where you will have dedicated hot tubs, pool bar, et cetera. And then what's most exciting is where these ships go. So the Prima and the Ziva are debuting kind of over the next year and a half. MCL will take possession of the Prima on August of this coming year. And the ship is going to do some really beautiful Scandinavian itineraries, Amsterdam and Copenhagen, uh, doing a transatlantic cruise from Southampton over to New York. We'll do a Bermuda trip this fall from New York. And then we'll head down to the Caribbean from New York, Galveston, and Miami as well. Now, you can look into these different destinations with your cruises.ca consultant because there's such a variety. If I talked about them all, we would be here all day. Uh, but one of my particular favorites on the Prima is this amazing itinerary from New York up the coast of Canada uh, and then heading over to Reykjavik in Iceland. And what I love is that it goes to Isafjord and Accuary, Accuary being one of the best places in the world to see whales as well. Now, the Norwegian Viva, which we get in summer of 2023, is a little bit different, and her destinations are a little bit hotter, quite literally. Uh, this ship is going to be sailing the Mediterranean. So for those of you who have been itching to get back to Europe and you have a bucket list, this is it. Uh, in doing eight, nine, and 10-day itineraries. And then in the winter, she'll be in the Caribbean as well. Just to show you how unique some of these itineraries are, look at this nine-day itinerary starting in Rome and ending in Lisbon. It's not often you see an itinerary like this, and this is super port intensive. So a brand new port every single day. It's nine ports in nine days, and you are checking off some of the biggest warm destinations in Europe that are the most popular to see all in one. Um, in terms of other unique itineraries, we also have this one, a 10 day. This is also sailing in summer of 2023, uh, starting in Athens, ending over in Rome. And you're going to see Turkey, Greece. You're going to see Italy, Sicily as well, and a little bit of France, which is really, really cool. We know how to do Europe really well. We've been voted in, um, Europe's best cruise line 10 years running. Now, in terms of what it's like cruising right now, I've actually been on Two cruises already. I leave Saturday for a third, and I have two more before the end of April. Uh, so I've been on board quite a few times, and I can tell you guys, I sleep so well at night, actually better than I do at home. One, because I love the rocking of the ocean, uh, but two, because I feel so safe on board. These are some of my own personal photos from when I cruised out of New York in the fall for a seven-day cruise to Bermuda. Uh, we did have a balcony stateroom, and I did, it was really big on being out on that balcony every single day. Everybody who cruises with Norwegian is fully vaccinated and we are testing prior to embarkation as well. So we're trying to guarantee as much of a bubble as we can. While on board, masks are going to be at your uh, discretion. If you'd like to wear them, you can. If you don't like to wear them, that's fine as well. Uh, and then we also will have our crew fully masked as well. Cruising right now is really great. And I can say that so confidently because I've done it. I'm actually itching to leave again on Saturday. These photos were all done on board the Norwegian Encore or in Bermuda at the Pink Beaches. The ships are sailing at about 50 to 70% capacity right now in terms of booking. Um, and my single biggest highlight, apart from the food, which was outstanding, is the fact that there is live music and shows on board the ship every single night. It feels like 2019 to sit in a theater and listen to Six, which is the new Henry VIII musical, to listen to Choir of Man, to just have live music poolside. It's something that I forgot uh, how much I love because it's been so long since I've done anything here. Please come cruise with us when you are ready. We will keep you safe. We will keep you comfortable and we will make sure you have a vacation of a lifetime. Talk to your cruises.ca consultants. Uh, and I'm going to pass it back to Christabel now so she can introduce the next of my illustrious colleagues and wait till you'll see their product. You think MCL is cool? These guys are going to blow you out of the water. Wow. 
I know you'll find me in that infinity pool overlooking the wake of the ship. I actually leave Saturday for my own adventure at sea with Norwegian and I just cannot wait. Next up is our introduction to Expedition Cruising with Alina Chiang of the award-winning Adventure Canada. Their award-winning Voyage of Discovery will take you to some of the most inspiring destinations on the planet. Take us away, Alina. Thank you so much for that warm introduction, Christabel. And thank you, Katie, for your presentation. As if I wasn't already hyped up enough to get back out there, I'm really feeling it now, so I'm super excited. Um, thank you so much to Merit Travel and Cruises.ca for the opportunity to present to everyone today. And hello and welcome to this presentation on the Arctic with Adventure Canada. My name is Alina and my pronouns are she, her. I'm a business development and account manager with Adventure Canada. I actually joined the team in 2020 and we haven't run any cruises since 2019. So as you can imagine, I'm so excited to take my first Adventure Canada trip this summer. And so this overview of Adventure Canada's Arctic experience in Greenland and Nunavut will hopefully tell you why I am so excited. So let's get to it. Okay, so Adventure Canada is a Canadian small ship expedition cruise operator, and the company has been hosting trips in the Canadian Arctic for 35 years. Our office is located in Mississauga, Ontario, and we visit destinations in Europe, Atlantic Canada, the Arctic, and Antarctica. We also stop at some other destinations in between, such as Haida Gwaii, which is on Canada's west coast, and Costa Rica and Panama. One of the key differences between Adventure Canada and other expedition cruise companies is we are a true family owned and operated company in every sense of the term. Um, pictured here is the Swan family. We've got our CEO, Cedar Swan, on the left. She is um, the daughter of the founder, Matthew Swan Sr. And then there uh, we've got C Cedar's brother, Matthew James, who is our director of business development. And then their sister, Alana Swan, who is the director of product. So I can tell you after working with Adventure Canada for over a year, I can confirm that the feeling of family translates into everything that we do, whether it's in the office, on the ship, or in the communities we visit. I mentioned that Adventure Canada's preferred method of travel is expedition cruising. And I can tell you that expedition cruising is a lot different than your typical large cruise ship. Um, the main reason is that we have an intended itinerary for all of our trips, but we actually don't guarantee that we're going to follow it. And a lot of people might be surprised to hear that, but let me tell you why. Um, the best reason is because we just can't plan wildlife encounters. So if you see a polar bear out in the Arctic, you're going to want to spend a little more time with the polar bear because, you know, we just can't plan those things. It's the expect the unexpected is what we like to say. And thanks to our fleet of Zodiacs, which is pictured here, we can visit places that larger cruise ships can't. And it's all part of the spirit of adventure is going into those hard to reach places off the beaten path. Here's the ship that we travel on. This is the Ocean Endeavor. It has the capacity of 198 passengers and it's an ice class ship with a class 1B ice hull. So it's not an ice breaking ship, so the ice, no problem. So I'm actually in the spirit of expedition cruising. I'm not going to spend a lot of time focused on the ship, but if you do have any questions about the ship, its amenities or our cabins, please contact your Merit Travel or Cruises.ca travel advisor. This is a map of the destinations that we're going to visit in 2022 and 2023. Um, you can see here we really focus on the Canadian Arctic, Atlantic Canada, and North Atlantic Europe. We're also going to be visiting Antarctica, Costa Rica, and Panama, and Haida Gwaii in 2023. This is the map of the Arctic expeditions that will run in 22 and 23. These trips only have one or two departures per year. And I, I like to say that the reason for that is because it allows you to be in the right place at the right time. So, um, you know, the Northwest Passage, as I mentioned, we don't travel with a ice breaking ship. The North melted enough to sail through without an ice breaking ship. So that's when we plan all of our travels through the Northwest Passage. So as I mentioned, right place, right time, you can always be guaranteed that you'll have a good experience, um, even though there's only one or two dates to choose from. And our Arctic destinations all have charter flights available. So we 
we encourage everyone to take the charter flights because it just makes traveling to the Arctic so much easier. And our ship will never leave without the charter flight being there to meet it. So you will never miss the boat, so to speak. And then, as I mentioned, 2023, we'll be visiting North Atlantic Europe, where we'll visit Scotland, stop at the Faroe Islands, circumnavigate Iceland, and sail from Iceland to Greenland. Okay, so the main focus of each of our expeditions is the destination and not the vessel. And I would say that's one of the, another one of the biggest differences between a cruise and an expedition cruise. The three different types of excursions that I'll be going through now are all included in your tour price on all of the tours. Um, and I think they really just get you to get a good feeling of each destination. So first up, we have Zodiac Cruising. Zodiacs have shallow drafts, and this makes them very safe and maneuverable to navigate within shallow inlets, fjords, bays, and coves. And that lets us get up close to geology, wildlife, and ice while maintaining respectful distances. Then we have community visits where we'll tap tour towns and villages with local guides, and we'll get to be treated to cultural presentations and informative lectures, traditional games, dancing, food tastings, you name it. And Zodiacs allow us to access small rural towns that don't actually have any road access and can only be traveled to by sea. And finally, we have expedition landing. So this will be hiking opportunities with various difficulty-based excursions determined by length, elevation, and terrain. I like to say this is the choose your own adventure option because um, if you're not feeling like a particularly strenuous hike or you know, maybe you just wanna take it easy, we'll have themed walks such as photography or botany and stationed interpretation sites for topics like archeology, span history, and geology. Let's talk about the Arctic. There are jaw-dropping sites and unparalleled wildlife encounters to be found here. It's a magical place that people dream of visiting for years. I'm going to share the top reasons that people love visiting the Arctic. And I think everyone can tell you who's been, they each have their own special takeaway from this amazing place. Number one reason people go to the Arctic is for the ice. We actually visit specific locations to go see ice. Um, so this photo here is from the Ilulissat Ice Fjord in Greenland, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And as you can see, you can get really up close and personal with all the ice and glaciers there. Next, we have wildlife. The Arctic is home to some of the world's most beautiful and majestic animals. And there are many opportunities to find species that you can't find anywhere else in the world. Uh, this is an overview of what we like to call the Arctic Big Five. It's kind of like a polar safari. And the Arctic Big Five includes walruses, musk oxen, beluga whales, narwhals, and polar bears. I liked, personally, I like the, the way that belugas smile. I think they're so cute. And they're actually very vocal communicators. So each, each species has their own wonderful things that you get to learn about them when you get to see them. And we'll also get to see species of seals and whales in the water, Arctic fox, Arctic hares and caribou on land and birds such as Arctic smurs and deer falcons in the sky. The summer is actually the best time to view the natural beauty found on the tundra. It's not as cold as everyone thinks. <laughs> it does get cold, but in the summertime, the tundra is in full bloom with gorgeous wildflowers and species that are unique to the Arctic. A special part of visiting the Arctic is meeting the beautiful people of the North. We'll get a chance to visit with Inuit communities and feel their warmth and passion for their culture. Inuit have not only survived in the Arctic, but they've thrived there for over 5,000 years. And to discover the history of European polar explorers who are looking for a route through the Arctic to Asia. So both of our Northwest Passage expeditions, as well as our high Arctic Explorer trip stop at Beachy Island, which is a resting place of three crew members on the ill-fated Franklin expedition of 1845. And finally, one of the most special features of the Arctic is the Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights. It's not guaranteed that you're going to see these on all of our expeditions, and that's due to the amount of daylight in the Arctic during the summertime. However, we do have trips like our Northwest Passage and Greenland and Wild Labrador expeditions that have the best chances of seeing them because they take place in September. 
Alrighty, here is a map of Arctic expeditions that will run in 22 and 23 again. And I'm going to go over a few quick destinations of highlights on these trips, specifically in Greenland and in Nunavut. So four of our Arctic itineraries visit both Greenland and Nunavut. These are Heart of the Arctic, High Arctic Explorer, Into the Northwest Passage, and Out of the Northwest Passage. These trips are exploratory and offer a lot of flexibility to spend an ample amount of time on both Canadian and Greenlandic sides of the Arctic. We'll get to visit communities and landing sites, search for wildlife, and find picturesque landscapes to enjoy in both countries. Here are some of the colorful buildings that we'll see along Sisamute Coast in Greenland. Another place that's great to stop in Greenland is Alulasat. Alulasat is always a favorite with our guests because there are so many things to do there. You can go to one of the cafes, go shopping, catch a game of soccer with the locals at the soccer pitch, see carving demonstrations, visit the art gallery, the museum, and of course, check out the main highlight, the Alulasat Ice Fjord, which features um, the seamouth of one of the most fast and active glaciers in the world, calving over 35 square kilometers of ice, which is more than any other glacier outside of Antarctica. We'll stop at Kingate, also known as Cape Dorset. This is a charming community on Southern Baffin Island in Nunavut and is renowned for their Inuit printmaking practices. It's the birthplace of the Inuit art market and remains the location of the oldest professional Inuit printmaking studio in Canada. So we get to visit here on our Heart of the Arctic expedition. In the Canadian Arctic, we'll get to meet the people of Mintimatalik, also known as Pond Inlet. We'll learn about the community's traditions of throat singing, drum dancing, and art. And we'll visit them on our High Arctic Explorer expeditions. We'll make a stop at Beachy Island on our Northwest Passage and High Arctic Explorer trips. This place holds historic significance for the ill-fated Franklin expedition of 1845. So John, Sir John Franklin was an English explorer who set sail through the, in, in search of the Northwest Passage, hoping to sail through the Arctic to Asia. And unfortunately, the crew found themselves stuck in the ice where they overwintered at Beachy Island. And unfortunately, three of the crew died and were buried here. This place holds significance to, to the exploration of the Arctic and Beachy Island has been deemed a national historic site. Um, these expeditions are actually still relevant today. I saw um, an, a piece about Franklin's crew in the news recently, and I even saw someone made a TikTok about one of his ships. So these, these, um, these ships have had um, a lot of influence on history in this region. And so it's really fascinating to explore that. One of the highlights on our Out of the Northwest Passage expedition is visiting Greece Fjord, which is um, Canada's northernmost community. They're located 1,500 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. And in the indigenous language, Asuituk, it means the place that never thaws. So that's, that's the name of this community. They were relocated here under false pretenses during the Cold War in the 1950s as an attempt by the Canadian government to maintain sovereignty in the north. And the community still lives here and thrives here to this day. We love visiting them on our Out of the Northwest Passage expedition. One of my favorite things to talk about is the way that each of the days in the Arctic can come to this beautiful closure at the end with a beautiful sunset with these bright oranges, pinks, you know, icebergs dotted along the horizon. It's just such a beautiful way to end each of those days in the Arctic. We have optional enhancements on our trips, such as the kayak rental program. This is offered on all departures on board the Ocean Endeavor. And we also have mountain bike rentals, which are rented daily. So if you're interested in these programs, please contact your Merit Travel or Cruises.ca advisor. And Adventure Canada has several promotions that you can take advantage of when you book your trip. So some major highlights here is our free single supplement program for solo travelers who want to book a cabin to themselves without an extra fee. Um, so yeah, to learn more about these promos um, that are available when you book, please contact your Merit Travel or Cruises.ca advisor and they'll help you find the best fit for you. And until May 31st, 2022, we have our 15% early booking bonus on our 2023 season. So if you're looking to book a trip in 23, it's definitely the best time to do that is before May 31st.
You can have peace of mind with our flexible booking policy, which includes flexible cancellation terms and transfers. And Adventure Canada has been awarded a safe travel certificate by the World Travel and Tourism Council and the Tourism Industry Association of Ontario. This accreditation recognizes Adventure Canada as a global leader in health and hygiene protocols. So to learn more about our COVID-19 policies and protocols, please feel free to contact your Merit Travel or Cruise Associate Advisor, and they'll be able to provide you with a lot more information, especially closer to when we sail. Adventure Canada has a lot of repeat customers who love to travel with us time and time again. And one of my favorite things about traveling is meeting all of the wonderful people that I cross paths with during my trip. So in some cases, I've made lifelong friends while traveling. I'm sure you all have too. And I just, I can't wait to sail on my first Adventure Canada trip this summer. And I hope to get to meet you on board. Thanks so much again to Merit Travel and Cruises.ca for the opportunity to present to all of you today. Um, yeah, I'm going to pass it back over to Christabel. And thanks again. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day. Can you believe how beautiful that is? It's so hard to put into words. Sign me up. <laughs> Final presenter for today is Shauna Cotter of Amal Waterways. Having been on a river cruise myself, I can tell you that there's nothing quite like it. I'll let Shauna explain that for me. Over to you, Shauna. Great, thank you so much, Christabel. And hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. I'm sure you've enjoyed learning all about NCL and the oceans and all the wonderful cruises you can take. And of course, exploring the Arctic. Alina, you did a great job. That was really exciting to see all of that. So now I would like to take you across the pond, shall we say, and head over to Europe to look at river cruising. So for those of you who have never river cruised or perhaps you have, but you're you're not familiar with Alma Waterways, we are a family owned and operated company. Rudy Schreiner, <clears throat> excuse me, Christine Karst and the Murphy family started this company 20 years ago. So we're very fortunate that last year we were able to return to river cruising in Europe. We started in July and sailed all the way through the entire year and all of Europe and all our partners, our cruise managers and all our crew on board were so excited to be able to welcome back our wonderful guests to come and explore these incredible uh, rivers. Of course, we continue to follow all protocols, government mandates, uh, on board and ashore, and these are changing daily. So we update our travel entry requirements and also our protocols on board. Currently, as of today, we're still requiring masks be worn when you're walking around the ship. Uh, but once you're seated in the dining room or the lounge or, of course, in your stateroom and outside, you don't have to wear a mask. And you must be fully vaccinated to travel with us. And now today, some countries are even requiring booster shots. So whatever the country uh, is requiring is, of course, what we will be requiring as well. We have 25 award-winning beautiful ships in our fleet, and today 22 of them actually sail in Europe. We have a variety of different staterooms to choose from, whether you're traveling alone, whether you're traveling with somebody as a, as a double, or even if you're traveling with family, friends, we have many, many different options and wonderful amenities on board our ships pools, we have a spa, we have a small gym on board, and a library and so much more. So lots to choose from. And of course, really, I don't have a lot of time to talk about everything. So the best thing to do is to reach out to your consultant at cruises.ca or Merit Travel, and they can certainly help you, uh, you know, decide which ship or which itinerary is right for you. When you do travel with us, you'll have our wonderful cruise managers with you from beginning to end. It makes the entire cruise fully hosted, but also if you do any pre or post uh, land tours with us, the cruise manager will travel with you there as well. If you're flying with us, you'll be met at the airport and transferred to the hotel or to the ship, and it becomes a fully escorted tour, and yet you're traveling on your own. But you are in good hands also with our wonderful crew on board. And these are really our AMA family members, and uh, they do an amazing job of looking after you while you're on shore, and of course, also while you're, you're uh, traveling with us on the ship. Included with your river cruise 
are all your tours. And we have many choices. There's, you know, two to six choices every day, uh, including our small guided walking tours. And this is a wonderful way to explore these little towns and cities that we get to visit. We also have biking. Our bikes are with us all the time. You can bike on your own. You can take any one of our guided bike tours. We have hiking. We also do yoga and stretching on board. We have wellness hosts on pretty much most of our ships. And um, of course, we also do wine tours and culinary tours, so many different choices. And there are no other tours that are optional that you have to pay for. They all are included. While you're on board with us, you'll be able to try the beautiful regional wines from these areas that we're sailing through, red, white, rosé, we change them daily. And it's unlimited at lunch and dinner, also beer and soft drinks. And then we have a wonderful happy hour party every day for an hour before dinner. So come into the lounge, get a drink, have a cocktail, wine, beer, your choice. Bottled water, teas and coffees and such are of course always included and available at any time. So to have along with that beautiful wine for lunch and dinner, and of course breakfast, you can have sparkling wine, have a mimosa maybe, uh, we have our wonderful dining experience. So we have our dining room, we have our chef's table, which is our alternative dining venue, which is complimentary of course, and we can cater to all dietary needs, including celiac, low salt, diabetic, what have you. It is not a problem at all. And you're in for a treat because this is always a big part of every journey is finding out about the food. What I really love about river cruising is the fact that you are docked right in the heart of these incredible towns and cities throughout Europe. Very easy to embark disembark and of course while we're traveling coming on and off the ship is very very easy it's like you're in a floating boutique hotel and our you know even when the ships are completely full we're still at 160 guests so nice and intimate surroundings the ship is yours think of it as your home away from home and you can come and go as you please now if we take a look at this map uh, of europe we are currently sailing on 11 rivers throughout 15 countries in Europe. So you have a lot of choice when it comes to itineraries and I certainly can go through them all today, but whether it's Portugal or Spain, France, Germany, the Netherlands and Belgium, or moving along the Danube through the Czech Republic, Austria, Slovakia, Serbia, and Romania, and even over to Turkey, we have lots to choose from. Probably one of the most popular rivers would be the Rhine River. And we also have the Main and the Moselle. Some of these combine with the Rhine or their itineraries on their own. And Amsterdam would be one of the big cities, of course, because the Rhine typically starts or ends in Amsterdam. So this beautiful city known as the Venice of the North with all the uh, waterways and the the canals throughout the city, the Rhine Gorge, a special day traveling through here, viewing all the castles along the Rhine, Strasbourg. And this is just a few of the sites you would see along the way. The Danube River, another one of the top river cruises, especially for first time cruisers, Danube Rhine are typically what people you know, would look for. You get those gorgeous capital cities here with Budapest and Hungary, Bratislava and Slovakia, and Vienna and Austria, and again, so much more. Over in France, five beautiful river cruise itineraries will take you from the north on the Seine, doing beaches of Normandy and the beautiful art history, all the way along to the south on the Rhone and the Seine for the colors of Provence, the essence of Burgundy. This is really wine, Burgundy Beaujolais country, uh, lots of history, lots of Roman architecture, beautiful wines, cheese, you name it. And then also the king of wines over to that region, which of course is Bordeaux and uh, many, many historic sites in Bordeaux as well. It's not just wine, but uh, I think all of Europe is certainly about wine and food, but more importantly, all the incredible history and those UNESCO sites. Lyon would be a, a city you would visit on uh, a couple of the French itineraries, and of course the culinary capital of the world, 
Avion, this UNESCO walled city is a beautiful part of history. We don't wanna forget about Portugal and the Douro River. This entire river valley is a UNESCO designated site. Beautiful, I mean, just look how quiet and peaceful it is. And Porto is either your beginning or end port, port um, right along the Atlantic. It really truly is this colorful, it really is an amazing uh, city to visit. So with all our Europe cruises, we have pre and post land packages so that you can see more of these iconic cities, Paris, Zurich, Lake Como, Basel, you can go into Barcelona, you can go to Istanbul, Amsterdam, Prague, Budapest, there's so many, I can't even list them all, but those are also available. For those of you looking for something a little bit longer, I know you've all been waiting to travel and saving your travel dollars. In 2023, we have our wonderful Seven River Journey. This is actually the third that we introduced for 2023 with the first two almost sold out. The autumn edition, this sails 46 nights, 14 countries, seven rivers on three beautiful ships. What an incredible epic journey starting August 24th, ending October 9th. And you will see so much. You can see on the map there just exactly how far you will go on this journey. So that again is in August of 2023. For those of you who are looking to get away this year, we'll start sailing in just a couple of weeks. We have our brand new all-inclusive More to Love package. There's Christine Karst, one of our owners and one of our captains at the Alma Christina. I'm sure you can imagine she's the godmother of this ship. And uh, we have select departures all across 22, where we're offering you this incredible all-inclusive package, seven night river cruise and a balcony stateroom. You can upgrade if you'd like, round trip airfare from a whole host of gateways across Canada, transfers, your pre or post cruise land packages included, port charges and our travel waiver plus program, all starting from 7,039 Canadian per person. This is thousands of dollars in savings. And then our beautiful exotic destinations, Vietnam, Cambodia, sailing on the Mekong River. This incredible program is probably still one of my very favorites. I've done it twice. Uh, you can do a seven night river cruise on the Mekong sailing from the bottom of Tonle Sap Lake all the way to Ho Chi Minh City or reverse, or add in our wonderful package where you'll get to visit Siem Reap, the beautiful temples of Angkor Wat, go to Hanoi and over to Halong Bay and overnight on a junk boat in this UNESCO site, and also visit and spend more time in Ho Chi Minh City. 15 night package or a seven night river cruise. You can go downstream or you can go upstream. All sailing on our gorgeous Amadara 124 guests. There's nothing more spectacular than sailing this beautiful part of the world and exploring this history. We also are over in Africa, and I'm sure you don't think about river cruising in Africa, but the Chobe River, just 50 miles from Victoria Falls, is this very unique experience where you actually are doing river or safari tours from the river. So you're coming to the shore as opposed to watching the animals go to the shore. And uh, this was an, an incredible experience. I really loved it. We also have more safaris as well as um, gorilla trekking in Rwanda and visiting Cape Town and Joburg and so much more. Our Secrets of Egypt and the Nile uh, started last September, a seven night cruise out of Luxor down to Aswan, sailing the Nile to see all those beautiful temples, spending four nights in Cairo to see the Sphinx and the pyramids and the museums and so much more. And also we have uh, additional packages you can add on in Israel, Jordan and Dubai. And I am sailing here in five weeks with 13 of my friends. So I'm very excited to be uh, heading over to Jordan and uh, also taking this amazing journey. There's Aswan there. You can see the Faluka boats there. Now, I don't want to uh, miss out telling you about our newest destination, which is yet to come. It will start very end of 23, 24, uh, early 24, and that will be Colombia. This is the Magdalena River sailing in Colombia. 
and stay tuned for more information about this. And we'll be partnering with Metropolitan Tour and offering wonderful land packages, probably Ecuador and Peru and hopefully the Galapagos. Reach out to Merit. Uh, travel or cruises.ca for more questions. I wish I could spend more time with you, but I want to thank you again for joining us. And I think I'll turn it back over to Lauren and we'll have some questions. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Shana. I think Egypt is calling my name. <laughs> I just um, want to mention the importance of travel insurance. You absolutely must have with COVID-19 coverage, as well as cancellation and interruption protection. It's a complex world and it's very important that you reach out to one of our travel consultant for a personalized quote. Protecting yourself and your vacation has never been more important. Contact with us on a social media platform where you will gain inspiration, receive the latest offer and maybe even win a prize. Thank you for joining us today. Feel free to reach out to one of our travel consultants about your future vacation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Christabel. And thank you, everyone else, um, all of our hosts for all this incredible inspiration. Um, yeah, I'm certainly itching to get out there and travel as well. I'm jealous of you that are of some of you that already have tra travel booked. Um, this is a great time. If anyone has any questions they'd like to ask any of our speakers, uh, please go ahead and do. Uh, type that in the chat box at the bottom. We'll give you another couple. We actually haven't had any questions come in so far. So if you do have any, we'll give you another few minutes. Um, and otherwise, we'll let everyone go off and enjoy the rest of their days. Okay, it doesn't look like any questions are coming in. So I think I'm just going to call it. Um, as we've explained many times throughout the um, presentation, if you do have any further questions, anything specific to any of the cruise lines, specific itineraries, things about the ships, insurance, et cetera, please do reach out to your Merit Travel or Cruises.ca consultant. You can see we've got the phone numbers and websites here, or you can also reach out to us on social media um, at Merit Travel or at Cruises.ca. Very easy to find us. Um, thank you so much again to everyone and uh, have a wonderful day. Thanks guys. Bye-bye. Bye everyone. Thank you.